It's a new month, the month of fools, I guess, right? <laughs> April fools. Uh, but with a new month comes a new verse of the month. And our verse of the month this month is 1 Corinthians 15, 56 to 57. And it anticipates two weeks from today, and that is Easter Sunday, the resurrection, our great hope. So let's read these words together. The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it is all about the resurrection, the center and the heart of our faith. Again, that'll be two weeks from today, but today we're going to talk about solitaire, (laughs) No, no, we're not going to talk about solitaire. We're going to talk about solitude. You probably remember uh, playing this game way back when, when computers didn't have a connection to the the internet. It was the epitome of being bored, Uh, or you didn't really want to, it was a way to procrastinate uh, doing your work. I wonder how many, uh, how many hours and hours that the game Solitaire was played in work offices when the employees should have been doing, should have been doing work. Uh, but again, we're, today we're not talking about Solitaire. Uh, we're going to talk about solitude. In our ever-connected world, boredom is becoming less and less of a thing. In those moments where we, in the past, where we might just sit, say you're at a a doctor's office, they had all those magazines that were there, and there might be something of interest, but more than likely, probably not anything of interest. Now in those moments where you're just sitting and, and you have nothing to do, you take that time up by, well, Bringing out the bringing out the phone and surfing social media or uh, playing solitaire on your phone, right? Or playing some other game or checking out all the latest news and and what is what is happening. Even uh, when we're alone, you know, we're not necessarily alone, are we? Uh, we are ever occupied. Our minds are ever occupied. Our hands are ever occupied. Our eyes are ever occupied, and something always seems to have our attention. Uh, Oftentimes in our home, virtually every day, my wife and I, we will tell the boys, right? What do we tell you boys? Get off what? Get off the screens, right? (laughs) We tell them to get off the screens, and uh, after a while, they'll, they'll come up and say, actually, they may say it like just a minute or two after we tell them to get off the screens, I'm bored, and my response to that is, is good. Sometimes it's good to be bored. Sometimes it's good to, to not have our, our minds and our vision occupied and not to have, be head of our, cap, our attention to be held, to be held captive. Um, but we don't do it, do we? Yeah, that's our kids, but, but even as adults, you're driving in the car, and what do you do? You, you turn the, the, the radio on. Some of us, may, maybe it's been a long time where you're just sitting in the car with, and driving along without the, the radio on or any music that is, is playing, but just driving there in, in the silence, in the moment. Or, you know, when you, you think about uh, being home. Have you ever done this where you, you just turn on the TV? You're not really watching the TV, but you, you turn on the TV just to have something to fill the void. It's for there to be something, that there be noise that is in, in the background. Because a lot of us, there's, there's many of us here, and I'm not saying everyone here, and some, some of you may, of course, I, that's, I don't do that. I don't ever have that happen. But there's a lot of us here that, that we're uncomfortable to be alone, and we're uncomfortable to just simply be there in the stillness, to be there in the quiet. It's good to be with others. It's good to practice community as a church, as we are doing here today. 
Uh, God did not create us to live isolated from other people, one another, but it's also good to take time to retreat sometimes. It's good to practice getting away and being alone. Uh, Jesus, Luke chapter 5, verse 16, it says he would withdraw to the desolate places. He'd go to the the wilderness, the the places that were were empty, there to to be alone, and there it says that he would would pray. And if this is good for Jesus to get alone, it's good for us to be alone. Now, the thing is, it's ever more difficult for you and for me. It's one thing for, for Jesus in the times that he was living, and many of our ancestors in the times and the days that they were, were living, that there were, there were down times. And there were, there was, as I said, boredom was more of a thing, where it's less and less, you know, it's becoming more and more rare uh, today. I don't know about you, but it's not surprising. And when we look around at the, the level of anxiety, the level of, of, of stress, the, the l- rates of depression, the, the rates of mental health issue, a, a big part of that is just that we're bombarded day in and, and, and day out with things that fill our senses to the, the max, and we just simply don't have the capacity to handle all that we're bombarded with. And sometimes you just need to say enough. And just stop it. Uh, some reasons. Some reasons why solitude is important. Uh, to, make, to make good decisions. You know, the, the thing about it is if you don't have time to be alone, you don't have time to process, you don't have time to think about the things that you are exposed to. How many times have you heard something that was reasonable And then you walked away and you thought about it a little bit more and you realize that what you once thought was reasonable was really a bad idea. If you don't give yourself the time, the space to think, to to process, it leads to making poor, poor decisions. Bad decisions is when we don't take time to think, to consider, to explore. If someone tells you that something is good for you without the space to ponder it, you more readily accept it. Think about this as well. If you don't have solitude, if you don't have space to think and process, what that means is you don't have an original thought to yourself. Your your thoughts are basically what everyone else and everything else is telling you to think. Think for yourself. Uh, And that, that starts by making the space and making the time to do so. Another advantage to solitude is simply to be renewed, to be refreshed, to be restored. Now, some of us, we're we're extroverts, and we're energized, and we're fueled by being together with other people. Some of us are more introverted, and oh yeah, you're you're, you're relating here, uh, because just being with other people simply wears you out. Wherever you are on that spectrum, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, we all do need that time alone to be renewed and to be refreshed. Uh, It's how God restores us. It says in uh, the Ten Commandments, the third commandment is honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Uh, That's all about, you know, taking that time to cease from activity to cease from all the input uh, that we have coming in in our lives and just simply to, to be. The next thing is to hear from God. Uh, how do you hear from God? It is in the stillness. Uh, it is in 1 Kings chapter 19. Uh, this may be a familiar story to you. Uh, you remember Elijah had the contest with the prophets of Baal. Uh, he calls down fire from, from heaven. Uh, the prophets of Baal are all killed. And then Queen Jezebel wants to kill Elijah for all, you know, she's furious as to what happens. So Elijah flees to the wilderness and he goes to a cave. Uh, it's traditionally Mount Horeb where, 
Uh, Moses also was given the Ten Commandments. And uh, this is what happens. He's, he's, he's in this place where he's not in a good place. Uh, he says, uh, God says to him, Go out, stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, it says, The Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the, it says, The Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind and, and earthquake, and the Lord was not in the earthquake. So they got a whole bunch of stuff that is happening here. The storm, the earthquake, uh, add a little fire to it a bit. After the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, what does it say? The sound of a low whisper. Some other translations uh, translate it. Uh, it was the still, small voice. You know, in the midst of all the commotion of this world, God is found in, in silence. God is found in the, the stillness. We all know this verse, right? Be still. It's often quoted verse. Be still and know that I am God. God is where God is. He's not a God of, of gimmicks. Uh, there are times in life where you know, a pastor preached a great sermon. I was moved by that sermon. There's times in, in worship where we've, a, a song was sung, and I felt inspired by the song that was, uh, that was sung. And there are certainly times where we, we, we meet God in, in those ways. But I, I find that the most meaningful times where I've connected with God and I've experienced God in my own life is just simply being still, being quiet and just asking for him to speak into my life. Uh, going beyond the, the be still, uh, we read it in Psalm 37. That was why I picked Psalm 37. Uh, we all know be still before God uh, and know that I am God. But, but Psalm 37 adds a little bit more to that. It says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently, wait patiently for him. Uh, there's something, you know, we can be still for a minute. We can be still for two minutes, maybe five minutes. But, but what does this say? Be still and be patient. There's a lot of, the Bible talks a lot about waiting. Go through the Psalms. Advent, we talk about that during the season of Advent. Advent is a season of anticipation. It's a season of waiting. Uh, God's timing is not our timing. And when it comes to waiting on the Lord, it requires patience. It requires waiting, waiting long. And this is what I would encourage you to do. Take some time just to be alone, just to sit. Don't bring your Bible. Don't use it necessarily as a prayer time. Have no agenda. But just sit there in the moment. Bring with you two things. Bring a pencil or a pen and a pad of paper, a notebook. Just set that to the side. And then just be still. And just sit there. It may be uncomfortable for you because you're not accustomed to doing that. And the other thing I'll challenge you, not just to be still, but, but wait until the waiting becomes awkward. All right, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. Why am I sitting here? I'm just sitting here, but just wait. Wait patiently. And if you wait long enough, I'm confident of this. You will hear God speak. You will experience there the presence of God. But, but what does it say? It says wait patiently. Wait longer than you think you need to wait. Keep waiting on him. Be still. Know that he is God. Another thing. Here, here's, here, here's another thing to challenge you to do. Get in nature. We live surrounded by artificial things. Things that are crafted and created by men. And certainly we have a beautiful sanctuary here. It's good to be uh, in this, this place. There's a reason we call this a sanctuary. Uh, and there's, there's great architecture in this, this, this world. 
that we can experience. It's certainly you go to New York City and you look at the tall buildings and, and that's a religious experience in, in many ways. But when God created Adam and Eve, where did he put them? He put them in the garden. And there's something to be said for experiencing God in his creation. Uh, God created us for natural environments. Think about, think about the experiences with God where God spoke to people. Where was it that was Moses when God appeared to him? He was, he was shepherding in the wilderness, in the field, and there was the burning bush. Again, we read the story of Elijah and the still small voice in the cave out in the wilderness. Jesus out in the desert for 40, 40 days. These encounters with God in solitude took place in natural surroundings. Uh, Cal Newport, he's uh, author of several books. He's a professor at Georgetown University, and he writes about the creative process in a book called Deep Work. And as Christians, we seek to have what would be called a deep faith, right? And that, that the things that we do for God would be meaningful. And he has this to say, nature has a way of filling our senses without demanding your attention. So we take notice of it, but the artificial stuff, you know, you go to an amusement park, it's sensory overload, right? You go to the shows, you go to the movie, you go to Broadway, you go to the, you know, the New York City, it, it, it overwhelms the senses, but nature it has a way of capturing our attention, but not in a way that is overwhelming. And he says, combined with the act of walking, getting some exercise, getting your heart beating, uh, you know, getting, the, getting you, um, you know, sweating a little bit, behaves like a performance-enhancing drug for deep work and the deep faith. He says, goes on to say, a relaxed state with an open mind can lead to creative insight and new ideas. Now, he's writing this from a secular perspective. But, but we can see the links and the correlations to experiencing God. A relaxed state with an open mind can lead to creative insights and new ideas. In other words, we're open to God in our lives and the experience of God in our lives. In fact, many authors consider their daily walking a part of their creative practice as they use this time to solve plot holes and other creative, other creative problems. So the simple act of just taking a walk in your neighborhood. And don't, you know, what I, I do a lot of times, I'll go for a run, I'll take the dog for a walk, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll put the AirPods in, and I'll be listening to a podcast, or I'll be listening to a music. But what he's saying here is don't, don't put in the music, don't put in the podcast, just walk and just be there. Just be there in nature, in this natural setting that God has given to us as, as a gift. Get in nature. The second thing, become hard to reach, right? Uh, I've come to realize the importance of being hard to reach. Like that picture? What is that? Phone booth. You remember those times where when you, you left the house? No one could reach you. No one could call you until you arrived at your destination or you arrived back home. Now, I have to say that, that having cell phones, being able to, you know, I, my wife runs to the grocery store and I was like, oh, she should, I need her to pick something up for me while she's there. I can always call her and, and reach her. My daughter just turned 17 and she's out driving on her own now and it's, it's good to be able to text her, are you okay, and for her to text us, yeah, that I, that I arrived at my destination or I'm on my, my, my way. So there's great conveniences uh, to having the modern technology and to be able to, to reach one another at any given times, but it also comes with its downfalls, doesn't it? Uh, because we're always able to be reached and we never, never turn it off. There were a time with no text messages, no emails, uh, uh, conveniences, as I said, are, are good. Uh, there's cases of emergency where these things are, are wonderful. But I, I just encourage you to find some those spaces, find those places where you, you can turn off the notification. You can turn off the phone, and, and even if the phone is, is ringing, uh, not to answer it. 
not necessarily to respond. Maybe answer it, and you, you, they can leave a voicemail. A text message doesn't need to be responded to now. You can respond to it later. Uh, I've practiced this for a while, where there are times where I make myself hard to reach. I'm working on a, me- a sermon for Sunday morning. Uh, that takes deep work, that takes concentration, that takes time to be with God. And, and you're working on that, and the phone rings, and you answer the phone, and then it takes time to get back to the work that you were doing before. And you know, the, the, instead of having an hour of concentrated work, you end up having three hours of unfocused, unconcentrated work that is not as good as that one hour of that concentrated, uh, concentrated work. Another thing, be present with others. We're talking about solitude, and and we think about solitude uh, as being alone. But what I want to emphasize here is to be alone with the people that you are with. Uh, That is to not be, again, going back to being hard to reach. That when you're with the people that you're with the people, you're not with the people on social media. You're not with the people on email. You're, you're not with the people that are texting you. But you're with the people that you are with. Be present there with the people, and especially the, the most important people in your life. Another pastor that I know, he talked about, he says, I want to be famous. And the way he framed that is, I want to be famous with the people that are important in my life. Uh, it's certainly great to, to be famous and, and for people to have notoriety and the respect of, of many other people, but it's also important to be valued by the people that are most important. So be present with the people that you are present with. The last thing I'll say here this morning is practice, practice Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Uh, The Sabbath is about ceasing from work. Uh, I'd take it a step further and say in our modern world, it's about ceasing from all the input that we receive. Take a day just to, to be. Take a day to get away. To have that, as, as said in Psalm 37, to be still and to wait patiently. To have the time, you got to have the time, and you got to be intentional about it, right? Because if you don't plan for it, if you don't make it happen, it's not going to happen. So take that time to cease from activity, to cease from input, and to just simply be still and allow yourself to know that God is God. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this time that you've given to us. Help us, Lord, to practice Uh, solitude, to be alone with our thoughts, to be alone with you, Uh, Lord, to to make good decisions, to be uh, renewed, to be able to, Lord, hear from you and to encounter you. Help us, Lord, to just find those times uh, to practice the Sabbath, to set those boundaries, to to experience you in this world and your creation, uh, Lord, and to be present with those that we love. We pray this all in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen.